Hey guys, welcome to another video from Home Studying Off the Grid on a very hot July afternoon as of this recording. <sighs> I'm sitting under the shade tree. I actually have been homesteading most of the morning. It's uh, one o'clock right now as I'm making this video. I actually started the day with a 30 minute run and then came back and got right into it. And uh, I was going to record what I was doing, which was simple. It was like cutting down some, some weeds uh, around some places close to the house that I've kind of, I just kind of let get out of control, then hauling them away. You can see my, my tracks here. I've got, um, you know, a riding lawnmower, and I use a, a trailer behind it to do a lot of hauling. And so I have a place way up there. That's the campground way up there where we make most of our videos. And these cicadas are loud. You hear that? I love that. I know I have a tendency to uh, drift away from the subject matter, but that's one of the things I missed. When I was, you know, I was out of the States for about eight years, and I missed hearing the cicadas. And when I came back that first summer when I heard them, uh, I was just like, oh, I'm home. I know I'm home. So anyway, I, I thought maybe I should record myself cutting down some of these weeds and hauling them because it's been a while since I've made an actual homesteading video. You know, and this is, our channel's name is Homesteading Off The Grid. So shouldn't I be making videos about homesteading out here off the grid? Like when the power goes out? But it's on now. So, but I thought, well, no, nah, just I wanted to get it done because I knew it was going to get hot. So I didn't make a video about that. But I was sitting up here underneath this shade tree because it's gotten hot, so hot to where it's now, you know, the time of day where you just kind of sit around and look at stuff that you should get done. Like, you know, big old tree log over there that fell a couple years ago. I really ought to get to cutting up and stuff. But not actually doing it, you know, because it's too hot. And I thought, you know, I really need to get around to making an actual video about actual homesteading. And here's that video. This is it. Now it's too hot really to get out there and do anything at this point. And I've been going all morning. I'm actually getting ready to go in there and take me an afternoon nap and then wake up and then write for a couple hours um, and then come back out here in the cool of the evening to get some more stuff done. But I wanted to share with you some ideas I had about homesteading. And these are particular ideas. Uh, these are the things maybe I wish I'd have known before I got into this. So maybe we could call this uh, uh, maybe uh, certain, certain things you absolutely must know before you begin homesteading. So, here are some of the things I wish I'd have known, and things I might do differently, or maybe not, just might have been nice to have been forewarned, before we started homesteading. Alright, so you may have noticed a little cut in the video just there. That doesn't mean that this is a fake video. This is still a real video, okay? Just, be so, just because you saw like an edit <clears throat> doesn't mean it's fake. I just had to think for a while about some of the things I might do differently. Here's one of them. Um, if you've been following our channel for a while, you know we had issues with a uh, previously annoying neighbor that we had to run off the crayon. Um, if you haven't been following the channel, here's a quick version promise not the 18 minute and 33 second version um you know whoever the person that owned this property before us had owned it for many years and for for all those years they allowed uh, a guy a local resident out here to take the hay off the property we didn't know anything about that and that had nothing to do with us when we came and viewed the property um, we saw almost six acres it's like 5.72 there was a field it was a hay field we could tell that but what we saw was the vision we had for the property, okay? When we started this channel, excuse me, when we started this channel, 
I remember making videos about our uh, fruit orchard. It's down below our our pond. We had uh, the first three trees we put in that fruit orchard were, were peach trees. And they're huge now. I mean, we bought them at Lowe's for like $22.99 or something. They were maybe four feet tall. One of them is probably 20 feet tall now. And a lot of the peaches have fallen off because um, the trees, the fruit trees, will actually um, abort fruit or, or little tiny fruits if the pit within that fruit was not um, pollinated. And you'll see that a lot with walnut trees. Um, it'll drop the little walnuts whose nuts were not pollinated. Well, actually, the, the blossoms were pollinated, which means basically that fruit or that nut will not actually form meat inside, and the tree knows that, so they drop them off. So in June, for, for example, uh, half your walnuts will drop off your trees, and you're like, what's going on? Well, what's going on is they're not going to form nuts, but the rest will remain, and then they'll fall off in October, and they have big, meaty, fleshy nuts inside. Fruit trees are very similar to this. So we planted these trees and we we're making videos saying, look, this is our fruit orchard. And we'd get the vertically challenged individuals who live under bridges come on and say, you are so fake. You're a fraud. Um, you're trying to make it look like you, like you have more than you do. That's three trees. How's that a fruit orchard? Well, because what we saw was the vision of where we were going with that. We had a couple of down years financially after that and our fruit orchard remained a, a, a little field with three three peach trees in it and then the tides turned for our circumstances and last year we planted another 33 fruit trees down there so now we have 36 trees in our fruit orchard so the the lesson to that is uh never give up on your vision we never did and we made it happen but my point is that we were not concerned with any sort of arrangements that were going on here on this property before we purchased the property. Some dude taking hay, been taking it for a thousand years, that had nothing to do with us. What we saw was a fruit orchard down there. This is an apple orchard we planted here. It's got eight apples in it. We saw allowing this upper meadow to grow up, which it's doing, it's in its fourth year now of not having been cut for hay, in a, in a nice clear campground up at top, which, which we have. And then we've got hundreds of trees down here in front of me. It's beautiful. This is what we saw, okay? But when we came here, when we bought it, when we moved in, what we ran into was what um, was the former agreements, agreement between the previous owner and the dude that was getting the hay. And what he saw was his hay field for life because that's how it always been. And it took us... Well, it, we, we, we put an end to it that year, let him get two more cuts, but the harassment we put up with for a year and a half after that, because he wasn't happy, happy about it, was, um, it wasn't necessary. I mean, but so here's the deal. I, if you're going to buy a property, okay, it, it, I know you've got your vision. This is your homesteading vision, you you know. Or whatever you want to do maybe you just want to have a big piece of property and not do anything to it i would recommend asking your real estate agent to ask the seller's real estate agent what sort of agreements the seller might have with any locals in regard to the use of that land i know i've heard other stories close by here where so you know people who grew up out here hunt, hunted on certain lands certain properties their entire uh lives i mean they grew up deer hunting you know on a certain mountainside and then all of a sudden you know uh the people that own the mountainside they pass away they were world war ii generation folks uh their baby boomer children are out being successful in chicago they don't want to come home so they sell the land and then some somebody who maybe uh is retiring from up in new england or in the northeast says you know Virginia's beautiful, the, the winter's down there, and whatever, this is applicable to whatever state you're in. I just want to go there. This is a beautiful piece of land. I've worked hard my whole life. I've got the money to buy it. So they come down and they buy those 200 acres. Now all of a sudden, here's three families who are losing their hunting grounds. Guys, I've seen that happen around here, and it's been very problematic. So my advice would be talk Talk to your, get the real estate agents talking about any agreements between these folks. 
and have your agent tell their aid the seller's agent to to contact those people and say hey look the new buyer has let us know that they are only going to buy this property contingent upon us kind of disbanding any agreements we had they're buying this property for themselves not you and now if the new buyer is open to allowing other people to come onto the property and hunt or take hay uh, let it also be known say hey he or she said that if you come meet with them you you guys can discuss any forward going arrangements in regard to these previous arrangements but it needs to start fresh it needs to start new uh, and these folks need to be told don't assume that just because your family's hunted here for six generations or you've cut hay off this land for six generations that that will continue under new, new ownership and then from that point if you don't have a problem with these folks hunting on your land or cutting hay on your land um which honestly we wouldn't have but the guy didn't come up and say hey is it okay with you if he came up and said hey I've been doing this for a thousand years and I'm going to keep on doing it. You might own the house but the, and you might own the land, but the hay's mine. Well, you know, if it hadn't been, if he hadn't taken that avenue, there's a good probability he still would probably be getting a good portion of hay off of this property today. But no, I don't respond well to such, uh, such forms of communication. I'll leave it at that. So there's some advice I can give you about things you should know before you start homesteading. Let me think of something else. Okay. This is pretty key. I would recommend this. Um, history of the land, history of the house. And this kind of ties in with another idea I had about, you know, maybe things you should know before you start homesteading it. And that is dangerous wildlife and uh, potential oddities. The woman we bought this house from was, or in the whole property, she was, I think, 88. And she was very pleasant uh, dealing with. I never communicated with her until after 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 the uh, closing and it was only by way of email once i did and uh she just she emailed me and said if you have any questions about the property or the house let me know it's been in our family for forever and it turns out her father uh acquired the property back probably in the 19 maybe 1920s or 1930s but at one point it was like 400 acres you know sliced up and diced up and sold throughout the years and she was kind of getting rid of the the remaining portion because she had had a gorgeous house built in northern virginia it was just it's like a resort so anyway um i asked her about poisonous snakes because you know i see snakes here regularly we had a big black snake on the back porch yesterday it's about two and a half feet long and she said, in, in, in her 88 years, she never saw or heard of any poisonous snakes even close to this property. And we have um, a pond in the front. I see water snakes. I've seen some big water snakes. See garter snakes. See puff adders. But she assured me there's no poisonous snakes. So I felt good. And that's, I thought, well, that's the only question I need to ask. I mean, <clears throat> there's bears around here. But they're black bears and I'm not scared of them. They're timid. They're harmless as long as you don't get in between them and their cubs in the spring and all that stuff. Keep your food put away. Don't leave food out, you know. But I wish I I would have asked her about oddities such as, as things that may or may not exist. Such as potentially Bigfoot Sasquatch. I wish I would have said, ma'am, have you... Or anyone you know, or have you heard of anyone in this area seen what may or may not have been a Bigfoot Sasquatch? I never thought to ask that question. Who would think to ask that question? I didn't. It's a beautiful cardinal down there. Here I go, derailing again. 
So our son went to, to a summer camp here a couple weeks ago and at some teacher's place and she had parakeets. So my son fell in love with parakeets. He wanted parakeets. And my beautiful bride, Dearly and myself, Dearly, a.k.a. Giggly Girl, um, we just don't like seeing animals in cages. And so he wanted parakeets and he begged and begged and we're like, no, 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 come on. He's like, I want a red one. I'm like, I got an idea. I said, why don't you just start putting this bird? We feed the birds in the winter, but we don't in the summer because there's plenty of food for them to get. And we don't want to make them dependent on a system. You know what I mean? Because uh, then they won't do for themselves. They'll always have their wings out looking for a freebie. But I said, you know, why don't you just start putting out this bird food over here to dry in these cardinals? And then there's your red birds and they're not in a cage. And so he thought it was stupid, but he started doing it. And it's so really cool now because there's a couple of cardinals we have here, a male and a female. Anytime he comes in the backyard, they fly up to him and start chirping at him. And then he goes in and gets his food and he puts it in the same place and they come and eat it. So he has conditioned these birds to basically when they see him, you know, start screaming for food. So he's happy because he's got his beautiful red birds and they're not in cages and we're happy because we don't have something screaming in the house waking us up at five o'clock every morning and we don't see an animal in a cage so anyway you know some of the weird stuff we've had happen around here and you know a lot of folks who've watched our channel for a long time they've seen it they've seen it in the videos potentially you've seen it in this video potentially behind me at my six o'clock i would have asked her about that I don't care what, I but I mean, here I could I couldn't look back and know that we would have these strange experiences we've had since we've been here. So I wouldn't have known to ask her, but I might have asked her a little bit more about the history of the house, what kind of because it's an old house built in 1903. I might have asked her about maybe what went on in the house or what went on in the property. Was there any trauma? Because you know, there's a graveyard right over here in the woods. I can I can see where it's at from here. Um, but it, it, it's on the other side of the property line. My neighbor owns it. But once upon a time, it, when this house was built in 1903, it was still one property. And, you know, three, it's a sad story. Three little girls uh, lost their lives during the, the Spanish flu of 1918, and they're buried over there. And some weird stuff's going on in this house. And I have reason to believe it may or may not be associated with some spirit activity as a result of those passings and these folks being buried over here. I might have asked about that. Maybe give me a history because you want to know, are you buying potentially a haunted house? Are you potentially buying uh, a property that is inhabited potentially? by creatures that may or may not exist, such as Bigfoot Sasquatch. You know, you, folks, you don't know unless you ask. You don't know unless you ask. So these are some things I wish I would have known to ask. I would have asked. So there's my advice. There's my advice on things you must know before you begin homesteading. And I hope you're pleased. This was indeed a video about homesteading. So there, everyone's happy. Go buy my new book, Bigfoot Sasquatch Files, Volume 3, on Amazon, in print or Kindle, by clicking on the link uh, in the description box below.